to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about working with dates and date formatters in Swift, uh, specifically for iOS development. So particularly, we're going to talk about how we manipulate dates and like the date objects in Swift, how we can convert a string to a date, uh, different formats, using different time zones, and things that are actually very practical. Uh, in today's kind of modern development. So with that being said, let's fire up Xcode and create a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application. Um, let's call it Facebook, uh, let's, yeah, let's call it Facebook. Save it wherever you'd like. And let's run this app in a simulator. We can expand this also. I don't know why we have to expand this every time. It's, slightly annoying, but let's go ahead and run this in a simulator. So working with dates is actually super important in today's apps. You can imagine an app like Facebook, which is why we picked the name. Um, we need to be able to support a variety of formats uh, of dates. So for example, when you see like status updates or pictures that have a little label below it that say like 15 minutes ago or one hour ago or yesterday at this time, um, a lot of that is using date and date formatters uh, in very, very rigorous ways under the hood. Um, and it's really important you understand how to use these formatters because oftentimes people try to show dates and stuff using just simple strings and adding time and seconds together, which is how I started doing it a long, long time ago, um, just because people don't realize that dates and date formatters are available to you. So let's go ahead um, and go to our storyboard and whoops, if I can spell storyboard today. Uh, and let's add a label to this. And we're just gonna be putting stuff in the label as we discuss dates for the sake of being able to see our uh, uh, computed dates. So let's make the background some, something dark. So let's do black um, and then let's put a white label on here. Let's put a label there. Let's change this text color to be white. Let's add constraints to make it, I don't know, 20, 20, 20, 20. Let's center the content and let's make the zero lines, which will basically be unlimited lines. Um, with that being said, let's go to our view controller and we're gonna quickly create an outlet so we can reference that label. If you're not familiar with outlets and uh, IB outlets and actions, I have another video in my intro to Swift. So I encourage you to take a look at that before we uh, dive into this because the, I'm not gonna really cover outlets, of course, in here. So let's go back to our storyboard and let's connect that main um, label outlet that we've created to this huge label that we've added. And let's run this app again. And we'll see that the black screen pops up with label, cool. So going back to our view controller, um, let's see how we can use simple dates. So the class is actually, in Objective-C it's called NSDate, um, but in Swift, it's called date. Uh, pretty straightforward. So to create a date, all you do is do date. And by default, it holds the current day's date. Um, but because this is an actual date object, we can't do something like label.text equals date. You'll see that it'll give us an error because the text is supposed to be a string and the date is the date variable is a date object. So somehow we want to convert this date thing to a string. Um, now, because a date holds things like time zone, your locale, uh, formatting information, we need to use another class, which is called a date formatter, to actually take this date and convert it to a string. So a formatter is very, very important, and it you can basically customize it to whatever you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a couple of things on here. We're going to say the time zone is our current time zone, which is determined by the simulator or the device. We're gonna say the locale is our current locale. And the most important thing, let's see if I can remember it, I believe it's called date format, is the actual format that we want 
to get the date in. So this format is actually kind of annoying to continuously have to look up. Um, and I'll share with you guys a website that someone has put together with a lot of these formats. But we basically want to specify how we want to get the date out as a string. So we're going to do the month by the year, sorry, by the day by the year. And what we can do on the formatter now is say formatter string for date and pass in the date. And that'll basically spit out a string from the date that we gave using the properties on this formatter. So let's run this real fast and see what we get. So you'll see here that we get 17, 25, 2020. 20. So what the heck is 17? Um, so 17 is actually, um, actually, I don't know what, where it's pulling 17 from. Actually, this might be, this is where we need to actually reference the actual documentation to see what these characters are. I believe it's actually capital will give us the month number, capital M's. Yeah, one, 125, 2020, so January. So there was a great example of me often forgetting what these formats are, like everyone does. So there's actually a uh, website. If we just search date formatters and we go to this, NS date formatter, someone has put together this website, um, which has a lot of these formats and it explains with an example what type of date you'll get spit out in the string should you use this format. So oftentimes we want to represent um, a time with AM and PM. We can do that through this formatter as well, um, which I guess alludes to, which I didn't mention, a date includes time as well. So it's not just the actual date, it includes like the date. The date encapsulates the actual calendar date, Gregorian calendar, and the time of day. So we can do Oh, I remember the lowercase m's is your minutes. That's what it was. So if we come here, we'll see this is the date and it's not spitting out the time for whatever reason. Let's see. Let's just use that and see what we get back out. So sometimes you gotta play around. Yeah, there we go, 4.19 p.m. Sometimes you gotta play around with um, the actual format. I myself don't remember it often, even though I've used this probably at least a thousand times over the course of my career. Um, so it's basically like once you get a hang of these formatters, uh, it becomes very interesting uh, of how you can represent um, styles of dates. So you can also do So there's date style and time style. And in here we have long, medium, short. So let's do medium. Let's get rid of this format and let's see what we get back out. I don't remember if we can not specify a format. Yeah, there we go. If we don't specify a format, uh, this is what medium looks like. So let's change this to full. And if we take a look at full, it gives us, as you can imagine, a more full date. So we have the day, the month, the day of the month, and the year. Um, now let's also specify our time style. And it should also tack on the time. Beautiful. So here is the time. It gives us the hour, the minute, the second. Uh, it gives us the, if it's a.m. or p.m., and it also gives us our time zone. So uh, I'm over here near New York, so Eastern Standard Time. Um, so let's change this once more, just to see what we get for short. And we get a very concise uh, date object and time. So as you can see, you can basically represent time very, very simply through this formatter. Now a couple of things to know. Uh, these formatter objects are very expensive to create, uh, expensive meaning in the sense of memory. Uh, so ideally what people will do is have one instance of this formatter. Instead of creating multiple of these across your app or across a class, you might want to do something um, along the lines of...
along the lines of this, um, which essentially creates one of these formatters and you can use them wherever you want in this class. Uh, sometimes people will create actual classes that are just for handling dates. Um, so you might want to create an extension off of the date class uh, where you can add this functionality. And the reason to do that is uh, twofold, right? So it keeps your actual code base organized. Um, and number one, uh, it basically just reduces your memory usage and the performance, it increases the performance of your application. So that's very, very important to keep in mind. It's a very common mistake I've seen people do. Um, now with these formats don't have to, formatters don't have to be in a view controller. They can be in a cell, they can be in a model, in a view model. Um, let's say you're working with a table view and you have multiple cells and all of them have to show a formatted date. They can be in there. Um, whatever you want to use it for, you can use this formatter to convert dates. Now the last thing I want to go over before ending this quick little video is I've shown you how you can convert a date object to a string. Um, now what I want to show you is you can also do the opposite of it. You can take a string and convert it to a date object. So let's go ahead and remove this, uh, these two formats. And let's add a style again. Sorry, uh, a format again. And we're going to do month, day, year. So what we can do is, you can imagine if we're working with like an API, if you're familiar with getting data from like a remote endpoint, let's say we wanna get a user's Facebook posts. This is Facebook after all. We would wanna get the data back um, and let's say we get it back from some some place. I'm not gonna dive into specifics of like where we would get it from. And let's say the post is hello world and the date is in this string format. How on earth would we convert this to an actual date object, which is more proper to use in our application? Well, it turns out the formatter comes in handy for that too. The important thing to understand is the format that you're telling this formatter about, uh, that is a format that the string needs to be to match in terms of converting to dates now there are some standards um, across like the internet and just software development, not iOS specific, for date formats. So a very popular one is ISO 8601. You can Google this and it'll show you the format that represents dates and time. Um, it's something along the lines of year, month, hours, minutes, seconds, plus Z, which is, uh, if this time is, rep this date time is represented in UTC, universal, uh, universal time, what does UTC, UTC stand for? I don't remember what UTC stands for, but uh, it's basically, in, it's in UTC time, and you basically, this, this, the plus Z here signifies for the time zone that you're targeting, um, how many hours to add or subtract. So for example, Eastern, you would subtract five hours for whatever U UTC is. That's gonna bother me that I don't remember what UTC stands for. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and show this in, in practice. So let's say this label, or let's create this date, which is actually um, the string. Now, of course, what we wanna do is we wanna say formatter, um, rather date for date date from string and let's pass this in now this is going to give us an error because this returns a date object and we can't specify a date to uh, the labels text so what we'll actually do is we'll just print this in the console for the sake of this video. Um, so it'll show up down here. Um, let's see, why is this complaining? It should still show up, let's see. Let's see what we get. Cool, there we go. So ignoring this warning, we can see down here that we get an optional 2011 December 12th and there's no time in here um, specified, rather this is 
6 p.m. specified, but uh, I guess this is just taking our standard uh, time because we haven't specified a time in the actual string up here that we've sent. So um, this being, let's see, what time is it right now? It's not five right now, is it? It is not. Um, but basically, the reason this returns optional uh, and this whole date object is wrapped in here is because essentially if the string that you pass in does not match the format that the formatter expects to be passed in, um, it's going to be returning nil and not an actual date. So let's actually change this to be something random. Let's say it's like a string that has characters. You'll see that this will pass null or nil because you basically told the formatter, hey, give me a date um, from this string. And the formatter is like, okay, well, I expect this format, but what was passed in doesn't match it at all. Uh, so yeah, that's basically where I want to end this video. Um, I like to leave in the little nuances where I forget myself what UTC stands for and some of the formats. Uh, it shows how real development actually goes down and that every single thing isn't memorized, uh, which should never be anyone's goal in terms of software development. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, leave a like below. It really helps out the video and the channel. Subscribe if you're new. I do videos on Swift, iOS, other technology along the way. Leave comments if you have any questions or feedback. I always love hearing from you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.